sometimes we're going to run into expressions in which we have a fraction within a fraction. So for instance, a fraction in the numerator or a fraction in the denominator of a larger fraction. Sometimes that fraction is with a constant term. Sometimes there are multiple fractions in part of that larger fraction. When we have a fraction within a fraction, we call it a complex rational expression. You'll tend to see them in higher level algebra classes as well as in calculus classes. So it's important to know how to work with them if they pop up and how to simplify them. There are two techniques that we usually use to simplify them. One is using basic order of operations um, to think about how the numerator and denominator need to be considered separately before thinking about it being a division problem. The other way that we can do them is to employ the LCD to use a shortcut. And the LCD will help us do that. But for now, I want to start with an explanation of how to use basic order of operations with two examples. So if you go back to when you learned order of operations, what you learned about order is that parentheses and grouping comes first. And technically, a fraction bar is a grouping bar. It groups the numerator separate from the denominator. So when we see an overall fraction bar like this, this actually means that we have the numerator divided by the denominator. So this is really 7 over y divided by 14 over y. We know that when we divide fractions, we flip and multiply the second fraction. So this would be 7 over y times y over 14. Then we can cross cancel before we multiply straight across. So these y's cancel. And then 7 is common to itself and to 14. So it goes into 14 twice. So when we look at what's left, we have a 1 across the top because when we cancel the y, we're left with 1. And in the bottom, we have 1 times 2 or 2. So we end up simplifying to simply 1 half. We did cancel a variable here, so we should show that domain restriction as y cannot be 0. So there's our first example. And again, we used order of operations by thinking about the numerator and denominator as separate entities before and then thinking about dividing them. We can do the same thing with the next example. We've got 7n plus 2 all over 3 minus 1 over n. So we have this overall fraction bar. And we want to think about the numerator and the denominator as being divided. So I could rewrite this problem. I'm going to go to the left, to the right here because I have room, as 7 over n plus 2 divided by 3 minus 1 over n. Now notice the grouping symbols here. Before we can do the division, we must perform the calculations inside the parentheses. So to add 7 over n and 2, I would need a common denominator. So I would have 7 over n plus, this is 2 over 1. To create a common denominator, I want to make that n in both top and bottom. So my common denominator is going to give me a fraction of 2n over n. Do the same thing with the next fraction. So 3n over n minus 1 over n. Then simplify the stuff that's in the parentheses. So I'm, I have 7 plus 2n over n divided by 3n minus 1 over n. And I no longer need the parentheses here because I have a single fraction divided by a single fraction. To divide fractions, we now can flip and multiply. So 7 plus 2n over n times n over 3n minus 1. You'll notice here we have an n that's common. We can cancel it. And what we're left with is a numerator that I'm going to write this numerator in, in descending order, 2n plus 7, and my denominator of 3n minus 1. The n canceled, so I should show that domain restriction as n is not equal to 0. So again, with order of operations, we want to think about there being grouping symbols around the numerator and denominator. Work on those separately, then think about dividing the fractions that are left. And to do that, we flip and multiply. So that would be using order of operations to simplify these complex rational expressions.